Hi, the introverted cynist here. Today, I am going to explain. The 2017 crime thriller film called All the Money in the World. Warning, spoilers ahead. Kick back and take care. The movie begins in 1973, Rome, where we see a 16-year-old boy, John Paul Getty III, wandering around the city all by himself. Paul is the grandson of oil tycoon, J. Paul Getty, who is at that time, the world's richest private citizen. After mingling with the local prostitutes, he gets called by a driver in a van. Suddenly, he gets kidnapped by a bunch of goons and flee from a place. We now see Paul being transported to a dungeon in Calabria with a veil over his head. One of his abductors, Cinquanta, starts to have a small chat with Paul and get acquainted. Later, he goes to a telephone booth and gives Paul's mother, Gail Harris, a call. After hearing the news, she becomes puzzled and inquires if this is a joke. Cinquenta then assures that it is no joke and he requires $17 million from her. She becomes helpless at first, saying that she doesn't have that much amount of money, but Cinquenta says to get it from her father-in-law and hangs up. Gail is unable to pay the ransom because when she divorced her husband, John Paul Getty Jr., in 1971, over his drug addiction and infidelity, she refused any alimony in return for full custody of her children. Since then, Gail has neither been in touch with her husband nor her tyrant father-in-law. Gail, with no other option, starts to give Getty a call about his grandson's kidnapping and the ransom, but he becomes disinterested and ignores her. Gail now on the call waiting for him, watches a live news of Getty addressing the press about his grandson's kidnapping, which has become a major scoop around. After asking him the question, he says that he will not pay a single penny for his kidnapped grandson, stating that it would encourage further kidnappings on his family members, and walks away. Gail becomes furious at his reply and decides to meet him in person. Later, he summons Fletcher Chase, who is an ex-CIA operative and a Getty Oil negotiator, to investigate the case and secure Paul's release. He says that he always had an affection towards Paul and wants him alive as inexpensively as possible. Gail after arriving to Getty's estate in England, meets Chase. Gail becomes adamant to meet Getty himself and not his employees. Chase then assures her that he is the only person who could lead to her son and is the only one capable to speak with Getty. After coming into an agreement, they both go to the airport to Rome. After arriving, they are surrounded by several reporters asking her questions. They now accuse her for not mourning enough for her kidnapped son and assume that she already has a lot of money and is reluctant to pay the kidnappers. Meanwhile, a CIA agent now escorts both of them for the investigation. After setting the base in her house, they start taking her testimony. The following day, Cinquanta persuades Paul to write letters to his family, requesting about the ransom. Cinquanta becomes tolerant towards Paul because his quiet and submissive demeanor causes them fewer problems. Just then, Chase steps outside to his car, where he gets bumped from behind and gets instructed to follow a guy in a car. He is then brought to a place and meets a group of people claiming to have Paul. But being an ex-CIA, Chase sees through them and says they are fake and don't have Paul. They now reveal that Paul always had plans to be kidnapped in order to extort money from his grandfather to live the better life. Later, Chase confronts Gail on the issue. Gail casually says that Paul might have cracked jokes about it, but she is not sure if this fiasco is a scam or not. Next day, Chase flies to meet Getty and informs that there could be a possibility about the kidnapping being a scam. Getty becomes disappointed at his grandson, saying that he had high hopes for his future, but says that he too is a parasite like the rest of the family. Getty informs this is also the reason why he is fixated with materialistic things, because it never changes its form and are exactly what they appear to be, unlike human beings. Chase then gets instructed to stay at Rome until Paul arrives. However, when weeks pass without the ransom being paid, things get extremely stressful, far longer than the captors anticipated. Arguments erupt about whether or not to relocate Paul as winter approaches and their current refuge is unsuitable for cold weather. Paul now requests one of the abductors that he needs to urinate and takes him outside. While peeing, the kidnapper accidentally displays his face to Paul and he contemplates killing him to prevent him from being recognized, but another kidnapper comes to the scene and shoots him. Later, Chase gets a call from the CIA informing that they have found Paul's burned body and becomes shocked. Gail and Chase now in the morgue, after a quick look, she cheerfully storms out, saying it is not Paul. It was then revealed that the body belonged to the kidnapper. 
They now find his previous records and his entourage, which led to their location. After carefully arriving at the place with a battalion, they now ambush and shoot down the people present. After questioning a survivor, he says that Paul has been transported and sold to another mafia gang. We now see Paul along with Cinquanta, meeting their new boss, Severio Mammoliti. The new captors are much less patient with Paul and negotiate more aggressively with the Getty family to receive their payment. Chase now understands the gravity of the situation and informs the news to Getty, but Getty argues with him, saying that it was a hoax before, according to Chase. But Chase now pleads that it was a mistake on his part and persuades him to pay the ransom. Getty now informs him that he is financially in no position to deliver the ransom and wants to make more money from his business. Chase becomes speechless after listening to his greedy boss's endeavor and leaves. After a couple of days, Paul now trapped in a barn, found a way to escape by burning a haystack outside, which ignited the whole place. Cinquanta sees this, but due to Paul being a good friend, gives him enough leeway to escape before letting the others know. That night, Paul meets a policeman, and later he takes him to his home. Unfortunately, the cop was working with Severio, and eventually, Paul was brought back to his custody again. Severio becomes furious seeing the damage Paul has caused. He then calls a doctor and instructs him to chop off Paul's ear by forcefully making him unconscious. After chopping off one of his ears, they mailed it to a prominent newspaper, stating that they will continue mutilating him until the ransom is paid. Ironically, Getty, who is a fanatic for paintings, now meets an art dealer to buy a rare painting for $1.5 million instead of using that money to help release his grandson. Both Chase and Gail were summoned to the office and informed about her son's ear. Gail now bitter seeing the ear in pictures, informs the press to supply 1,000 copies to Getty's estate so as to get his attention on the issue. Later on, they reduce the asking price to $4 million after numerous talks with Gail and Chase and dissatisfaction from the captors over the length of the procedure. Getty eventually chooses to pay to the ransom, but just $1 million because it is the maximum amount he can deduct from his taxes, according to his tax attorneys. In addition, he will only do so if Gail signs a court document relinquishing her parental rights to Paul and her other children to her ex-husband. She hesitantly agrees to sign them without any other option. Later on, Getty ultimately caves in under the pressure of an irate chase and agrees to pay the entire ransom, voiding the parental agreement with Gail. After wiring the money to them, Gail and Chase transport the funds to Italy and follow the kidnappers' explicit instructions, depositing the funds in a secure area and getting orders to pick up Paul at a construction site. Cinquanta feeling uncertain about his new associates, advises Paul to flee the location and head for the village of Loria, which is kilometers away. Meanwhile, the kidnappers discover that Chase has violated his oath and led the cops to them. Enraged, they resolve to track down and murder Paul. After not finding Paul in the construction site, they decide to look for him in the nearby city. Chase, Gale, and the other kidnappers come to Loria in search of Paul. One of the captors locates Paul first, but Cinquanta fights him, allowing Paul to flee. After a wild turn of events, Gale finds Paul and becomes elated and wraps him tightly in her arms. The trio then escape the scene and quickly smuggle Paul out of the country to safety. In an ironic twist, Getty now feeling sick and nauseated, gets hold of his latest painting and rests on his sofa and eventually dies from a heart failure. When Getty dies in 1976, Gail has been summoned by Getty's attorneys to unveil the big news. They inform her that she is now tasked with managing her children's inherited wealth until they are of age. The company was set up as a charitable trust, which meant that Getty's income was tax-free, but also not spendable. He had invested much of it in paintings, sculptures and other artifacts. In the following scene, Gail is seen in the mansion with Chase, talking about the numerous paintings and sculptures that are still stashed under the mansion. Gail along with Paul, now considers Chase to be part of her family, and bids him farewell. The movie ends, with Gail, staring, and loathing, at Getty's own bust. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more videos.